The Enlightenment is a period when philosophers started to write that individuals had equal rights. Whether you were poor, whether you were rich, you had certain natural inalienable rights. If the masses of people felt that their ruler was not being responsible, then it was the right of those people to demand a better government. In the year 1685, Charles II dies. Charles II had been restored as a monarch after the first English Revolution in the 1640s. His brother, James II, takes over. However, he marries a Catholic woman, and they have a son, and they baptize him Catholic. Therefore, the future ruler of England would be Catholic. This was too much for the English that had just gone through a civil war. They were now a Protestant country. So what resulted was the Glorious Revolution. It is called the Glorious Revolution because there was no bloodshed. The people, or I should say the Parliament, which now had power, had called James II's sister Mary, who had been married to William of Orange of the Netherlands, to come and take the throne. The Parliament had kicked James II out. He fled to France, and a war erupted between both countries. Because of this revolution, Parliament gained the right to assemble regularly. They did not need the king's permission to vote on all matters of taxation. They were also given the right of habeas corpus, the right of a citizen that they cannot be imprisoned without any justification. A law must be broken first, and also trial by jury. A Bill of Rights was signed where even the monarch must obey the law. Parliament also passed the 1680 nine act of toleration which allowed non-anglican protestants the freedom of worship and also in 1701 the act of succession where all future monarchs must be from the anglican church this revolution began the political and social institutions that became a part of republican britain during this period of english revolutions thomas hobbes first published the Leviathan in the year 1651. The book was written shortly after the first British Civil War. Hobbes argued that kings do not rule by divine right or God's will, but is made by a social contract by the people to allow the monarch to rule. However, he was a firm believer in a strong central government, similar to Machiavelli's perception. Later, around the time of the Glorious Revolution, John Locke would write the two treaties on government. It would be written before the Glorious Revolution, however published afterward. He agreed with Hobbes concerning a strong central government is needed, but he believed in human individualism. Everyone possesses rights, and if a leader tramples those rights, then the people have the right to overthrow the government. Therefore, he supported constitutional monarchy, where the king has limited power and the people control Parliament. Locke also believed in religious toleration, although he was wary of Catholics who were trying to reverse the advances in England. His writings would be influential preceding the American and French revolutions. So as mentioned before, the Enlightenment began in the late 17th century, the 1600s. It was caused by the disdain of absolute monarchy and focused instead on individualism and more political freedom granted in England. Also in Northern European societies, already divorced from the tightly controlled Catholic Church, secularism began, separation of church and state. The scientific achievements begun by Copernicus, Bacon, and Descartes flourished in these societies. Most Protestant groups, though, were also intolerant of other religions. In the year 1685, Louis XIV of France reversed the Edict of Nantes, French Huguenots, Protestants, fled to the Netherlands and England. They became the dissenters against absolutism, and their literary works were sent back in pamphlets to the French society. Both men and women would meet with other civilian groups to discuss common interests, political science, women's rights, etc. Newspapers began to flourish, each one with their own agenda. Free speech was allowed in England, and all of Europe wanted the same rights. So in France, again, since the king was an autocrat and they clamped down on individual freedoms, 
you would have the development first of salons, both men and women of the educated upper class. The merchants, the aristocracy, the lawyers, the educators met privately in large groups in different individuals' homes. Rather than meet for a party atmosphere found at Versailles, these individuals would discuss subjects du jour, promoted intellectualism, and no subject was taboo. You also had the Freemasons. This organization was more of a membership-oriented lodge. They also held discussions found in the salons, but they were generally for men and membership was required. Inside the lodge, they would hold elections, thus a spirit of democracy. This concept spread to the European continent and helped establish the concepts for a democratic society. It is important to note that most believe the undereducated lower classes should not have the same privileges because they could not possibly understand the relevant issues because they were undereducated. Following this, you would have the development of scientific academies. Many scientists shared their ideas and experiments with others. This brought about cooperation and free thinking to pursue other ideas. In the United States, Benjamin Franklin started the American Philosophical Society in Philadelphia in the year 1743. Actually, it was before the American Revolution, but thus he was part of the Enlightenment. All of these organizations allowed free debate. Many focused on the Catholic Church and Christianity in general. The Catholic Church had attacked Galileo's writings, so the philosophers started to look at the Bible and some of its fallacies. It also attacked the hierarchy of the Church and the belief in transubstantiation, the belief that as you are drinking wine, it actually miraculously turns into the blood of Christ. These philosophers doubted that. Many of these philosophers attacked Christianity and religion in general. Some were atheists and others were deists. They believed only those Christian doctrines that could meet the test of reason. For example, Deus believed that a God was a creator. They also knew that Jesus Christ existed, but they were skeptical of his miracles, such as walking on water and healing people. Instead, they believed in Christ's compassion for the poor and ethics and thought man could best serve God and Jesus with treating others kindly. They certainly did not believe in the church hierarchy whether Catholic or Protestant. So this all took place in the early periods. John Locke would die in the year 1706, so therefore a new generation would start to publish. Voltaire lived from 1694 to 1778. He left France because of its hostility to people attacking the Catholic Church. He traveled to London and grasped the Enlightenment and Locke's ideas, started to gather these ideas from the free-thinking English. In the year 1733, he published the letters concerning the English nation. Officially, his works were banned in France, but he enjoyed a huge following after he called for constitutional monarchy, free speech, and religious toleration. His ideas laid the foundation for the 1789 French Revolution. He would be followed by Montesquieu, he believed in a balanced government, a strong executive, balanced a strong legislature, but he wanted a limited monarchy, thus similar to Great Britain. However, the aristocracy should rule. The masses of the people were uneducated peasants, which were incapable of leadership. While he did not believe in true democracy, he did show his despondence toward French absolutism. Jean-Jacques Rousseau was from Switzerland. He was most famous for writing the social contract. He reviewed the writings of Aristotle and his belief in Athenian democracy. People should do their best for the community as a whole, not for themselves. Therefore, hold frequent elections. People that stay in power too long will ultimately abuse their power and govern with self-interest. Rousseau disagreed with Montesquieu in that all citizens should elect a legislature. While he wanted more universal education for men, Women were supposed to be pampered as wives and mothers with a less formal education. Marie Wollstonecraft wrote A Vindication of the Rights of Women. She was a critic of Rousseau. While she agreed with his position against monarchy and for republicanism, she thought women were equal to men and had the same capacity for reason and self-government. She criticized current law that married women did not conjointly own property and were less than their husbands, compared the husband's role to the power of the monarchy. 
And finally, Adam Smith was an economist, and he's most famous for his book, The Wealth of Nations. Adam Smith wrote the seminal work on capitalism and spoke how price determined by supply and demand. However, he also tried to send a message to the British Parliament. This book, The Wealth of Nations, was written in 1776, the same year that the American colonists were resisting taxation by the British and declared independence. Adam Smith believed that England did not need a costly overseas empire. Instead, free trade would bring the British wealth and the best consumers would be their colonies. Therefore, it wouldn't matter if the Americans were free to form their own government because due to their culture, they would have a strong relationship with Great Britain and continue to trade. So Adam Smith said to Parliament, basically, don't fight the American Revolution, let them be free, and they will still be loyal British subjects.